Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming. Welcome to this month's Mother of All Demo Days meeting. Uh, for those who are new here or haven't attended in a while, once every month, the Starfleet and Endress teams and beyond everyone, get together to share progress in their pro uh, projects in the format of a demo. Um, this is also an opportunity for those in the community to share their own projects. First off, we have Jackson with Magna. So, yeah, hey, everyone. My name is Jackson. I am with Magna. Um, so for those who aren't familiar, um, we are a token cap table management um, as well as on-chain vesting solution. Um, so we're working with you know, various projects who are in need of distributing their token, whether that be to employees, investors, advisors. Um, and so we automate all those vesting schedules on-chain uh, through you know, our custom-built smart contracts. So I'll be walking you through today what our platform looks like and kind of how our, you know, how you'd be able to manage it. So <clears throat> this view that you're seeing right here is essentially you as the project or whoever the admin is, uh, you'd have this view to see all your different stakeholders, how many tokens that you've allocated uh, to each one. Um, and then you get additional details from our system as well. So you can see up here with Karthik, he has over 91,000 tokens that have been unlocked, but he hasn't claimed any. Uh, so our system will prompt you that there's a claim available, um, whether you want to nudge, you know, your stakeholder through Telegram or you want to do it through Magna, um, you can let them know, you know, there's tokens available to claim. Whereas someone like Marcy here um, has claimed all of her tokens, so the system will let you know that's up to date. And then we'll also prompt you if there's any missing information like a wallet address. So you could see here, um, you could easily add a wallet address for your stakeholder or they could log in to add the wallet address themselves. So I just want to give you now a, a look on, you know, what it would be like for your stakeholder logging in. So while this portal is loading, um, again, whether it's an investor, an employee, advisor, contributor, um, you know, whoever that stakeholder may be, they want to be able to log in so they can view their token allocation and ultimately claim their tokens that unlock. So <clears throat> when they do log in, uh, they'll get this nice detailed view, which is uh, we include this token timeline. So with the token timeline, you can really track, um, you know, all of your unlock dates, how many tokens are unlocking on each date, and then ultimately how many tokens you've claimed. So it's a nice, easy way to, you know, stay on top of your unlock schedule, uh, making sure, you know, you don't miss any sort of unlock dates uh, to claim your tokens. And the claiming would all happen right here within Magnus. So whenever there's a claim available, um, all your stake stakeholder has to do is connect their wallet and then they're withdrawing their tokens direct from Magna to their connected wallet. And then one more view I just wanted to show everyone is in here. We'll also write it out for you and your stakeholders. So it's very clear all the specific dates on which you have tokens unlocking and how many tokens in total are unlocking on those dates. The unlock terms, so you could really understand the duration um, and details around the unlock schedule. And then last but not least, you also have the ability to upload documents. So whether on the project side, you wanna upload SAFs or token warrants, or if on the stakeholder side, there's like 83B elections or you know whatever the investment document may be, uh, it's very easy to have documents live here in Magna. So that way, both you and your stakeholders can make sure whatever agreements you have off chain or corresponding to whatever you see here on chain within Magna. <clears throat> um, and then, you know, in terms of the projects, um, it's super easy to invite anyone else in to Magna. So you can control, you know, other users, whether you want to make them just have viewing permissions or full permissions to um, edit stakeholders. So you have the flexibility there. Um, and then we'll also have a transaction page for you so you can keep up to date with all of your on-chain, um, you know, transactions and executions. Um, so that's a you know kind of quick run through. If anyone wants to you know reach out directly and talk in more detail around Magna, happy to uh, happy to chat. Awesome, thank you so much, Jackson. Um, up next, we have from the Sentinel team, Bernie. Cool. Uh, this is Bernie. I'm I'm um, engineer manager at Sentinel team. Um, so our team provides software services and data set uh, for monitoring and analysis of the Filecoin. Uh, blockchain. So uh, we have been working on an effort to um, store all the historical blockchain data uh, in BigQuery 
using our software and uh, the full archive for snapshot since Genesis. So in this demo, I will um, just quickly demonstrate how can we query um, the data. So the, the data set uh, in BigQuery um, is a public data set. So anyone with a URL um, and a valid Google Cloud um, account should be able to open and query it. But you will, be, you will, you will need to pay for the compute uh, since we um, we don't want to be responsible for, for anyone's uh, compute expenses. So once you um, have access to the data, uh, data set, you can see uh, it's this one, Lily. So it has all the tables uh, extracted from um, our Lily software. So um, we'll go, we'll, we'll, we'll use the, the most common use one, uh, derived gas output. So this table contains all the gas consumption for every single message that's, uh, that's happened uh, on, on our blockchain. Okay, so here's the table schema. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about table schema, uh, feel free to go to our uh, Lily documentation website. Uh, it has a very comprehensive um, model documents here. Okay, let's go back here. So um, here I'll try to demonstrate how we want we can get um, the base fee and the average base fee and then the average total cost per message um, for every single day since Genesis. Um, so I'm not sure how people are familiar, uh, familiar with SQL query, but here we try to group uh, the height by um, by date. So we divide it by 2,880 and then 10 times it back. So um, all the messages on in, happen in the same day will be grouped together. And then we, we calculate the average base fee round and the total cost. Total cost is cal uh, calculated by adding base fee, minor tips, and overestimated burns. And we divide, and since the unit here is the ATO field, so we divide it by uh, 10 to 18. And also the, the work condition here, we only want to filter the successfully um, um, accepted messages. So the exit code is zero. Okay, so we can run the query here. Okay, so here's the result. Let's look at the drop information. So you can see that um, this query scan all the, um, the does a tip full table scan of derived gas output. So it scanned around 60 gig of uh, data. Um, and uh, if you're interested, you can check out the execution prep to see how, um, how many rows is scanned here. You can see that we scan 1 billion rows from the table. And it does aggregation, uh, basic computation and aggregation, and then generate the results. Okay, so from the result, we can easily um, visualize the data, click explore with sheet, connect with the BigQuery uh, result in the Google spreadsheet. Here we can create a chart. It's creating a new, new sheet. Um, select line graph, time, and we select both the uh, metrics. Let's sort it by time and see how it renders. Okay, you can see um, it's a little bit weird because in the beginning of the network, the, the fee might not look normal. So let's try to add some filtering here. So we expect the average cost should, be, should not be more than one field. So let's filter anything beyond that, and apply the filter. So here it is. Uh, it's a full his historical um, data for the average um, gas fee. So you can see after the uh, FEVN launch, we do see an up uptick trend. Um, but, but keep in mind that this query is, is just um, for demo purpose. Uh, you usually want to filter, filter out, uh, filter it by the, the type of message that's applied to the blockchain instead of like doing the 
uh, average across all messages. Okay, um, let's look at another example. So we have the uh, we have FEVN specific tables here. You can see the FEVN actor states, block headers, contract, etc. So uh, let's see. Um, let's say we want to know how many transactions FEVN transaction per day since the uh, the network upgrade the FEVN launch. So here we do the similar query, uh, but but just counting the number of rows. And here we filter out the height based on the FEVN launch epoch. So let's run this. Okay, cool. We have result. Let's check it out in the Google Sheet. Again, let's pick uh, our chart. No stacking. Section sorted by time. All right. Here's all the number of transactions uh, per day. Um, there's some missing dates. Uh, we're still backfilling the data, but it should be complete uh, very, very soon. Cool. Uh, I think that some of the demo today from, from our team. Feel free to reach out uh, on Slack, uh, feel dash Sentinel, um, or yeah, or ping me directly on Slack or via email. I'll be more than happy to answer your question. Thanks, Bertie. All right. And then last but not least, we have Patrick. Uh, so I'm Patrick from the DRAND team. For those of you that aren't familiar with DRAND, we are a network uh, for distributed randomness, which currently does uh, creates random numbers for Filecoin leader election and some proofs and a bunch of other stuff. And we're a team inside PL. Uh, late last year, we shipped time lock encryption on top of the DRAN network, essentially the ability to encrypt something now that can't be decrypted until some time in the future has come. Uh, so with that in mind, we've been building a bunch of different tools and applications on top of that. And today I will be presenting the V0.0.1 version of Pace Lock. Some of you may be familiar with the website Pastebin. Essentially, you upload some bit of text and other people can find it or use it. Pastelog is kind of the same idea, but for time lock encrypting data, it's somewhat of a social app, you might say. Uh, so here we've got on the right-hand side, uh, a bunch of things have recently been decrypted and a few things are going to be decrypted soon. Um, I see Eric already uploaded a cipher text, but timed it slightly incorrectly. So it was already decrypted by the time the demo started. But fear not, we will uh, we'll encrypt something else. So let's, uh, the time's 1921 now. Let us encrypt something from 1922. We can add some times like hello and world. And let's see, welcome to the mother of all demo days. Uh, we can upload that now. Oh, the demo effect not in session. We can see it's appeared ooh, up here because it's coming up pretty soon. And in a few moments' time, we'll see it get decrypted. But in in the interim, we can also do things like search by tag, everything you might expect. So let's search for DRAND. And we can see that was me testing paste lock ahead of the demo day. It worked then, and it worked now, thank goodness. We can see our ciphertext uh, on the right here has automatically been decrypted. Uh, and we can see the original ciphertext and the plain text that has come out of it. Um, unfortunately, this isn't quite uh, as beautiful as Magnus web app because this is the V001. Um, so hopefully it'll get prettier. If you have any things you want to stash online for people to see, you should use paste lock. Maybe if you're a, uh, a journalist that has a scoop on something and you're afraid of getting assassinated, stick it on paste lock. And even if you get assassinated, the world will still know what you had. Uh, so yeah, I welcome you all uh, to try it out, uh, put anything you want up there. This is based uh, on top of our time lock encryption library, uh, tlock.js. There's also a Go library and the community have built a whole bunch of different Rust libraries to do it because we have a lot of Rust stations within the DRAN community. Uh, and that was a nice quick demo. That's basically everything. If anyone has any questions, I will be happy to field them now.
a, a grim use case indeed, but a use case nonetheless. Um, cool. Well, with that in mind, you can find the DRAN team in the DRAN channel on Falcon Slack. We also have our own DRAN uh, Slack workspace, which you can find a link to on the DRAN website, which is DRAN.love. In case the text was too small, because I've got an ultra wide, super 4K, all singing, all dancing monitor, the URL for PaceLock is PaceLock.DRAN.love. Thank you very much. You can find me on Slack. Awesome. Thanks so much, Patrick. Um, all right. Well, that concludes our Mother Vault demo days. Uh, thank you so much to all of our presenters. Um, for those interested in demoing the next month, uh, we are scheduled for the 20th of July. So I strongly encourage those who have any projects they want to share project uh, progress on or anything that's shipped, uh, we would love to see you there. And um, I'll be sharing the recording after this, uh, once it's up. And thank you again, guys. Have a great day.